Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. It's Gabby and Janet here with the 18. And in this video, we'll be talking about the COVID-19 and the impact it has in Arizona and specifically the real estate market. So stay tuned. Hey guys, so as we said before, we'll be talking about the COVID-19 mostly known as the coronavirus and the impact it's really done into in in our state you know here in in arizona and our real estate market which is a big topic that everyone is talking about right now you know what's going on with real estate i know a lot of things changing yeah so for one here in arizona one of the biggest um majority group of people that are being um impacted is small business owners so for small business owners, this is huge because um, Arizona is very heavy. Um, they take a huge impact in our economy. Arizona actually has 44.5% of our workforce that is made up just based off of small business owners. Yeah, and a small business, to those of you who don't know, is any company that has less than 500 employees. Right. So that's, that's pretty huge. Um, we are seeing lots of drastic um, closures happening. As a matter of fact, as many of you know, Jen and I own multiple businesses, um, two of them being restaurants, you know, and actually one of them, um, we had to close down, which is our Thompson Cafe in downtown Phoenix. And then um, the one that we have, the restaurant, the Thai food restaurant, Thai Gourmet, um, we're really struggling to keep that one afloat. Yeah, so everyone is suffering right now in the country, as a matter of fact. Um, yeah, so it, you know, it really sucks because um, unfortunately right now due to the situations, you know, we can't really like push as much as we we're, we're able to as, as small business owners. So um, we do still see a lot of people spending money. You know, we see people supporting huge chains, but something that we do want to um, encourage others to do is really support their local businesses. You know, their small local businesses, you know, um, for change if you're going to do takeout um uh, all of them are offering to go you know most of them are able to do to go orders and so you know really support those chains if you are considering doing takeout for your families yeah. as of right now our governor Ducey has not locked down our state so that's just an fyi because i know a lot of states right now are you know quarantined and on lockdown yeah so we're not officially on lockdown but schools are closed down um some of them are till april um some of them till the end of the month it really depends on the school district so um i would recommend if you have more if you have questions about you know your kids and all that um uh, call the school district obviously they'll give you more information um right. also no um you're not allowed to dine in anymore at any restaurants bars are closed a new thing that did change is that you're able to order alcohol with your takeouts. Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, bars and restaurants are mandated to be closed after 8 p.m. So that is one thing that 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 did change. So um, so for those of you who are uh, wondering, you know, what the unemployment rate is in Arizona, right now our current unemployment rate is 4.5. That does not include um, all the job losses that were, you know, unfortunately, all the job losses that have come with the uh, COVID-19. Or will happen. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, it's a very, it's interesting times and they're definitely uncertain. Um, we do want you guys to stay safe out there, you know, minimize your exposure. We're all going through something that we have, nobody, we've never experienced this before, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like we were talking about a perfect economy. Uh, Gabby and I, our business owners, were landlords and we're investors. So just a few weeks ago, we we're talking about how many projects we have coming up. Planning quarter two. Planning quarter two. And it's it's crazy, you know, in, in a matter of days, you know, everything is just, <laughs> it's just changing Turn, rapidly. Yeah. You know, we don't know what to expect. All we can do is hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Something that is really big that people are talking about is the um, real estate market. You know, it's a big topic among our friends, the news, basically everybody that we know are calling us up. Hey, what's going on with the real estate market? Yeah. Is it crashing? Is it going good? You know, what should I do? Right. Should I sell now? Should I buy now? And yeah. Yeah. So as of right now, today, March 21st? 23rd. <laughs> 23rd. 
as of March 23rd, um, you know, our market is still moving. You know, we have sellers that are needing to sell. We have buyers that need to buy, you know, before certain deadlines because people still need to move. Um, lenders are still funding. Title is still recording and realtors are still out there showing. We are taking precautions though, so we are sanitizing. We are trying to keep everyone safe, you know, and minimize exposure. Yeah, you know? so, so as, as like us and many other realtors, we're still trying to implement the virtual meetings. Um, if we have listings uh, come, or appointments with buyers, we try to do it virtually if possible. If not, you know, sanitize, keep yourself, Lysol, you know, all, all, all those things that we have to do. But let's go into the real statistics. I think that's what people want to know. <laughs> so we'll go into that. So the number of listings or inventory is rapidly increasing. Um, just from a week ago, uh, we now have 9% more inventory than we did just a week ago. So uh -huh. what does that mean? And Gabby can go over into that. But one of the things, um, yes, people are scared. So a lot of people cancel their contracts. But not only that, one of the biggest things and impacts that happened in Arizona, Gabby, if you want to go? So one of the biggest changes that, that has changed is that our eye buyers, such as Open Door um, and Zillow, have stopped buying here in Arizona, which is huge and could mean um, could be a reason for the drastic increase in inventory as well. Yeah. Um, those sellers that were expecting to sell, thinking that they have their house under contract, those contracts were broken as well. Yeah, so they are basically the largest eye buyers. They just stopped Stop buying, buying operations completely. And how, how does that work for those of you who don't know Zillow and Open Door and all those? They buy off market, so those houses <clears throat> or those deals never hit the MLS. Um, they get a cash offer, and then a couple weeks later, they get put in the market. So because they completely stopped buying and canceled contracts, all those obviously um, are hitting the market now because regardless, people need to these move. are people that wanted to sell their homes. Mm -hmm. So now they're all of a sudden popping up more rapidly than expected. Right, and it is spring. Um, a lot of people do, usually we do see a trend of seeing more houses on the market um, by spring. Um, another thing is we only have 12,000 listings, active listings in the state, in the Maricopa County. So, that still puts us at a seller's market. It's still a very high seller's market because there's hardly any inventory. Other things um, that can impact the increase of the increase of listings are a lot of investors who have Airbnbs are now just putting it in the market because they really have no money to liquidate or continue to moving them. So they're just putting them out in the market, giving the buyers the opportunity for more options. I guess right. like one of our Airbnbs, we have tons of cancellations because of the. So what happened um one of our investors their airbnbs got canceled as well yeah so, so these Airbnb. are just extra homes that are being paid off by you know visitors yeah so definitely um the market has been impacted in i guess any possible way that we can think of mm -hmm. um yeah so one of the biggest things that i know i, I want to talk about and i have my notes here in my laptop to get as much information as possible because, like I said, everything is changing rapidly. We check status, like, we, we try to check the status updates almost on a daily basis, daily basis, because we're not going through a regular, it's not regular. This is not common. This has never, ever, ever happened before. So, we don't know how to react. We don't know what to expect. And I keep saying this, we can only hope for the best. And remain calm, obviously. You know, we will get over this. It's just a matter of time. And... You know, right. seeing the impact so, of this costing. So one of the things that is changing daily is rates. You know, our interest rates are just up and down, up and down. So they can't really make up their mind right now, but there is a reason behind it. One of the biggest changes and the biggest impact that has immediately dropped and shocked a lot of people is down payment assistance. And this literally just happened over the weekend. So that's what I'm telling you. Things are moving quick um so, so yeah so many of those um buyers that relied you know on down payment assistance programs or were heavily relying to to use those plan to use those in order to buy a home uh that might not necessarily be an option at the time being right now yes so um a lot of them got eliminated before they used to be up to 20 options you know depending on the lender now we only have two options and for those, the rates have now went up from the low fours to 
in the mid of five. So 5.125 to 5.75 for down payment assistance program. And that, yeah, and this is something that just happened over the weekend. Um, obviously, like we said, things are changing. Mm -hmm. and and the reason that can ha the reason that happened is um, because of lack of liquidity on the second on the secondary market, uh, which is basically where the DPA mortgages um, are traded in. So with everything going in, obviously they're gonna stop everything and hold what they. I mean, they were already nothing is forever, right? You know, and definitely. we have you know educated our buyers that we're relying on down payment assistance program. That, you know, if you were wanting to buy when those options were available, now that was the time. You know, unfortunately, nothing lasts forever, especially programs like this. It's always up to the the government to dictate when or when to cut off these, these programs. Exactly. So, um, obviously, this just happened over the weekend. We don't know what to expect and things are continue and will continue to change as we see, you know, the outcome and the process of the uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um yeah so with that being said all we can recommend as real estate professionals is if you were looking to buy a house um don't be upset i mean definitely talk to a lender if you need a professional lender to talk to please reach out to us we have our information in the comments below or in the description section um also analyze your market you know our rates are still good right now you know, we cannot predict that they're going to be better or lower or higher once this is over. You know, we can't predict the future. We're just real estate agents. We're not actual psychics, market psychics. <laughs> yeah, so um, one of the best things that I would recommend for you to do is if you were thinking of buying a house, now it's the time to talk to a lender. And the reason why is because by the time this is over, at least you'll have a full action plan of what to prepare yourself. You know, don't give up this time and be like, okay, I'm not buying a house and just forget about it. This will be the perfect time to talk to a lender, see your situation, you know, so you can actually plan and take advantage of this low time to maybe call your creditors or work on your credit and, you know, do all those type of stuff. Yeah. Now, so, yeah, but if you're looking to sell, it's still a seller's market. You know, it's still a good time to sell. Houses are still selling. People are still buying. You know, you just have more competition because more people are wanting to sell their home. Gabby and I are all about stats. So one of the main things that we wanted to look at is, you know, the cities that have the highest increase in uh, inventory over the weekend or just over the last couple of days. So um, I didn't want to go over all 17, but I'm going to go over the top five. Number one is city of Avondale um, with a 46% increase in inventory. Wow. Yeah. Number two is Gilbert, 20% increase in inventory. Uh, number three is Chandler with 19%. Number four is Mesa, also 19%. And last but not least, number five, Queen Creek with a 15% increase in inventory. And um, like we mentioned before, things will change um you know all we, we can say um until the markets <clears throat> until the markets until the markets find their new normal the situation is it's a fluid you yeah. know um it's a day-to-day day-to-day day -to -day, day -to -day yeah. determination and we'll continue to make more videos and give you guys an update um preferably by the end of the month you know so we can catch a lot more data and get a, a picture of what exactly is going on yeah yeah. So much has changed in like just last week. So it's kind of hard to give you guys like, hey, where we're at. But this is just based off what's changed in a week, which is drastic changes to our market. Exactly. You know, so, um, so we do want to, anything else? No. All right. So we do want to go ahead and tell you guys to be safe, you know, really practice self-quarantine. It is helpful and, you know, it minimizes the exposure and the exposure to others getting sick. We also want to thank the nurses and our first responders and our doctors, you know, for being front lines and our truck drivers for stocking up all those empty grocery stores. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, we wish you all the best. Let's all stay safe and, you know, just share happiness and not panic. That's one of the major things. Stay away from Yes. Um, you know, we want to tell you guys to be kind to others, you know, now in a time where everything's so um uncertain be nice to one another be nice to your neighbors you know be there for people that really do need help like your elders be respectful you know be careful be be caring to others 
um, as these are hard times. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things I wanted to say is don't spread panic or fear. Guys, we will get over this, and I, we pray that everything will go back to normal. Obviously, like Gabby said, it's in certain times we don't know what to expect. Um, if you do want to if you wanted to find out more information, go to cdc.gov and get um, information yeah. about the stats and everything. The news obviously spread fear and panic. We don't even watch the news. And um, yeah, and if there's anything that we can help you with, or you have any questions about Arizona or the real estate market, you know where to reach out to us. You know, um, we will put our contact inf our contact information below. And last but not least, please like and subscribe to our channel and leave any comments below. Well, we hope this was helpful, guys. Bye.